All right, music fans, welcome. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. All right, um, Dave, where can I get this uh, Quint Starkey album? I have no idea. <laughs> Japan. I would try Japan, all right? So if you can access the retail markets over in Japan, you might be able to get yourself a copy of this brilliant, brilliant album. It's a soft rock album. If you want to call it Yacht Rock, that's uh, your prerogative. But um, again, if I'm giving out Grammys, Davies, say instead of Grammys, I'm giving out Davies this year. I'm giving a Davy to this album right here. <laughs> Just added some more lingo to the channel. Um, quintessential. Um, if I were a record label, and I could be a record label, a president of a record label maybe, um, the song uh, Fear of Flying would be a single and then take your pick most of it is very radio friendly and uh very gentle on the ears your ears will not bleed quint starkey and his album quintessential um so yeah uh before i move on here don't forget to check out modern retro radio modern retro fm.com um I think they're doing some kind of retro weekend this weekend where they've got all this music from their archives and they dump it in there. So you get to hear a ton of music that you won't hear on terrestrial radio stations, uh, modernretrofm.com. Now, uh, a patron sent me this article. I wasn't sure I was going to do anything with it, but it is kind of interesting, especially in light of David Crosby, who passed away not too long ago, and who once said that uh, Daryl Hannah was a purely poisonous predator. <laughs> He's looking for alliteration. You know, always the guy who's really great with words, David Crosby. And lo and behold, apparently, uh, Daryl Hannah is driving a wedge between husband Neil Young and uh, her ex, Jackson Brown following a troubled past. This, according to Radar Online, um, it's pretty interesting here. One time pals Neil Young and Jackson Brown were driven apart by screen beauty Daryl Hannah. You might remember her from what, Splash, right? She was in Splash a long time ago, and that's pretty much all I remember about Daryl Hannah. Uh, apparently, a gaping gulf remains between Neil Young and Jackson Brown. Neil Young, 77, began dating the 62-year-old Splash star. Wow, she's 62. <laughs> this stuff happens quickly. Uh, in 2014, that's when uh, they started to date on the heels of a split from Neil Young's wife, Peggy and the celebrity couple tied the knot four years later. But Daryl's explosive 10-year relationship with Jackson Brown, 74, has cast a long shadow over the friendship of the rock legends. In 1992, Daryl shocked the world when she emerged in public with black eyes, a swollen lip, and a broken finger and did nothing to dispel rumors that the sensitive singer-songwriter Jackson Brown was the culprit. Yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have um, expected that from Jackson Brown, but maybe he was, you know, kind of running on empty and, sorry. Uh, <laughs> if he was running on empty and uh, he was losing his mind, he probably should have you know, walked the other way and gotten out of that situation, but apparently he didn't do that. Jackson Brown denied playing any role in Daryl Hannah's injuries and was later cleared of any wrongdoing by local police. Interesting. Still, the rumors dogged Jackson Brown, who took legal action to remove references to the alleged assault in a 2003 TV biopic on Daryl's subsequent boyfriend, John F. Kennedy Jr. Wow. And, of course, 
John F. Kennedy Jr. is dead, so that adds even more intrigue to this. Uh, with no lost love between Hannah and Brown, the Heart of Gold singer Neil Young was caught in the middle. Neil and Jackson were pals, and they had a lot of musical friends in common. Jackson even earned Neil's gratitude by performing for free at his annual bridge school benefit for physically challenged children. So bad blood between uh, Neil Young and Jackson Brown, uh, courtesy of Daryl Hannah, who apparently, according to David Crosby, might actually be a purely poisonous predator. <laughs> oh, it's so funny that David Crosby uh, was probably right about all this stuff. And look, um, should it have broken up Crosby, Stills, and Nash? Eh, probably not. But you know what? Uh, I don't know how much longer those guys could have uh, kept it together. Um, all three kind of like uh, type A personalities and you add Neil Young to it, and it just gets even worse. Um, for fans of the music, it's too bad, because if everybody had kept it together, my guess is there would have been a few more live concerts along the way, and you never know. There may have been maybe one more studio album that these guys could have put out together. Um, if you've heard Stephen Stills lately, though, you're shaking your head saying, no way. Um Graham Nash, he's got new material out there, and it's very good. Neil Young, it's going to be a little iffy with Neil Young, anything that he decides to record. And David Crosby, prior to his passing, was planning a tour. So call me a crazy conspiracy theorist, but um, I don't know. I don't think uh, David Crosby was thinking that he was going to die anytime soon. That's just my guess. This happened with Jeff Beck as well, as things were kind of being planned. And then something happened very quickly. And I know these guys are kind of old. Um, but the media has made it sound like they're 120. You know, oh, he was 77 or 82 or whatever. And yeah, once you get into your 80s, then things start to go downhill fairly quickly. And uh, you can always look back at David Crosby's life and say he was lucky to make it that long. Even Graham Nash, I think, said that stuff, that we were expecting Dave to expire a long time ago. Yet he beat all the odds and they were still fighting. But then at the end, everybody uh, was rushing out to make statements about how great David Crosby was. The whole situation to me uh, seems like a very dysfunctional family. And you put Daryl Hannah in the mix there and you got Jackson Brown. <sighs> I don't know. Um, this is what happens when a rock star gets involved with a movie star. And clearly David Crosby saw the motive possibly, although you know, Daryl Hannah, I'm thinking, had her own money, but maybe because she was on the downside of her movie career, um, that things weren't going to get, you know, much better financially speaking for her. So hooking up with Neil Young, who can make money, you know, pretty much every year he wants to go out there on the road, plus all of the money he's getting from what selling, didn't he sell his catalog? portion of his catalog. Uh, if he didn't, he's probably got uh, some royalties or some publishing or whatever still coming back to him. Uh, he might be in better financial shape than Daryl Hannah. I don't know. Um, but David Crosby, he thought he knew what was going on and he said it out loud. And that was the end of uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young and Crosby, Stills and Nash and Crosby and Nash and any other combination of these guys that you can think of. All right, folks, in any event, one more time with uh, Quint Starkey. Quint Starkey, the quintessential album. People are asking me, hey, where can I get a copy of this? And I'm like, nowhere. <laughs> and Japan, that would be a place I would look. Yeah. Um, 
they are selling these in Japan. And you know what's interesting about that is that in Japan, they will actually buy CDs still. And uh, they love this kind of music and they love any kind of throwback oriented stuff that Americans used to love like 40 years ago, 43, 44 years ago. Uh, none of this stuff gets near a terrestrial radio station. And it's sad because this would class up your local radio station like nobody's business. <laughs> but call call the programmer up and say, hey, have you heard the new Quint Starkey album? They're going to go, who, what, what's a Quint? You know, so yeah, it's it's sad people. But here we are. Here we are, and we're doing it together. Thanks for being here, folks. Don't forget about Patreon if you can help me out. I'll have a link to how you can get to Patreon, a dollar a month, two bucks, five bucks. YouTube memberships, very easy to sign up for one of those, two ninety nine dollars a month. Uh, eventually, I'm going to make some content for YouTube members only, uh, but it's got to be interesting and kind of weird and off the wall, so I haven't had... Uh, too many brainstorms there. That's because I'm getting a little bit older and I forget. Um, what else? Okay, so I, oh, uh, Modern Retro Radio. Don't forget about those guys. ModernRetroFM.com. Playing new stuff by classic, classic artists. Very unusual. Yeah, they actually do it. So uh, I think, what, the new Graham Nash. I talked briefly about that here. Uh, they might be playing some new material from Graham Nash. So you want to check that out. My name is Dave. Thanks for being here. Uh, God bless y'all. God bless America. More importantly, though, God save America. Or as uh, Joe Biden likes to say, God save the queen. <laughs>